All right, well, good morning, everyone. Um, happy Lord's Day. Today is uh, Sunday. Great uh, day to, uh, to get out there and go to church, uh, spend an hour um, worshiping God, uh, focusing in on Him on prayer by, by praying and uh, worshiping Him and uh, getting our eyes off from ourselves, getting them on God and, uh, and just uh, lifting Him up. And, and when we go to God, and we uh, we lift him up in our in our lives and our attention and our focus and we get our focus off from the things of earth and we get him onto heaven, get him onto God. Um, we'll get him off from earth's solutions and get him onto God's solutions. And anytime we focus in on God's solutions, um, uh, really we we end up turning our lives into into His hands. We we put our our lives into His hands and and it's so much better. So much better putting your life in God's hands and uh, knowing them, knowing that uh, the God who, who made you, who created you, who loves you, has a purpose for your life, also has now had your life turned over to him. Um, let me tell you, it's, uh, it brings a lot of peace. It says that, uh, that the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. You know, and so when, when we, um, when we acknowledge him and we, we ask him to direct our paths. He gives us peace. And uh, I hope that you know that peace today. All right, let's keep reading uh, Job 14 and 15 today. Uh, a little bit shorter of a reading because I got a little bit excited and carried away uh, yesterday when I was reading. So he says, uh, Job again is answering <clears throat> his friends uh, who, are, who are not helping him. Um, he says, mortals born of women are a few days and full of trouble. Well, we know that, don't we? Uh, life can be full of trouble. And he says, they spring up like flowers and wither away like fleeting shadows. They do not endure. Do you fix your eye on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. A person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and let him alone till he has put in his time like a hired laborer. At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. As the water of a lake dries up, or a riverbed becomes parched and dry, so he lies down and does not rise. Till the heavens are no more, people will not awake or be roused aroused from their sleep. If only you would hide me in the grave and conceal me conceal me till your anger has passed. If only you would set me a time and then remember me. If someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will, <clears throat> I will wait for my renewal to come. You will call and I will answer. You will long for the creature your hands have made. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag. You will cover over my sin. But as a mountain erodes and crumbles, and as a rock is moved from its place, as water wears away stones, and torrents wash away the soil, so you destroy a person's hope. You overpower them once for all, and they are gone. You change their countenance and send them away. If their children are honored, they do not know it. If their offspring are brought low, they do not see it. They feel, feel but the pain of their own bodies and mourn only for themselves. Um, so Job's struggling here. He's struggling with the the some of the just the realities, trying to make sense of you know the beginning of man, the end of man, the strife that comes in all of those things, and and the realization that God is God and God stands outside of all of those things and above all of those things, and certainly He does see when we're born and He sees when we die and has um, a plan for our lives, and yet gives us free will, gives us free will, and and He puts in us a soul which makes us different from the animals and plants and everything else. We have been created with souls. The, um, the very breath of God is what was breathed in us to, um, you know, to, to cause us to be alive and to have a, um, a soul. We were made in the image of God, which makes us distinctly different than all of the rest of creation. And yet Job is just struggling. He's struggling with the realities of, uh, you know, we get one go around, you know, despite what some of the other, you know, religions kind of talk about about this whole idea of um, um, you know reincarnation and and uh, being caught in uh, um, 
you know, samsara and, you know, looking to, uh, um, you know, just be reincarnated and hopefully get rid of, you know, all of the, um, you know, karma from the past and all of those things. That's not a biblical uh, teaching. We've been given life to live one time and then to die and then to face the judgment of God, you know, for the life that we have lived because we've been created in the image of God. We are not just uh, uh, here on accident or, or you know, um, just floating through, you know, the cosmos. And God has made us very particularly and with, with a very special purpose. And so we have to struggle with some of those things, the reality of suffering and pain and, and um, you know, the fact that uh, we get one go around. Okay. And Eliphaz now answers Job in chapter 15. He says, then Eliphaz, the Temanite replied, would a wise person answer with empty notions or fill their belly with the hot east wind? Would they argue with useless words, with speeches that they have no value? But you even undermine piety and hinder devotion to God. Your sin prompts your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. Are you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth before the hills? Do you listen in on God's counsel? Do you have a monopoly on, monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we do not know? What insights do you have that we do not have? The gray-haired and the aged are on your side, Me, men even older than your father. Are God's consolations not enough for you? Words spoken gently to you? Why has your heart carried you away? And why do your eyes flash? so that you vent your rage against God and pour out such words from your mouth. What are mortals that they could be pure or those born of women that they could be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones of even the heavens um, are not pure in his eyes, how much less mortals who are vile and corrupt, who drink up evil like water. Listen to me and I will explain it to you. Let me tell you what I've seen is what the wise have declared hiding nothing received from their ancestors to whom alone the land was given when no foreigners moved among them. All his days, the wicked man suffers torment. The ruthless man through all the years stored up for him. Terrifying sounds fill his ears when all seems well, marauders attack him. He despairs of escaping the realm of darkness. He is marked for the sword. He wanders about for food like a vulture. He knows the day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish fill him with terror. Troubles overwhelm him like a king poised to attack because he shakes his fist at God and vaunts himself against the Almighty, defiantly charging against him with a thick, strong shield. Though his face is covered with fat and his waist bulges with flesh, he will inhabit ruined towns and houses where no one lives, houses crumbling to rumble. rubble. He will no longer be rich and his wealth will not, in, not endure, nor will his possessions spread over the land. He will not escape the darkness. A flame will wither his shoots and the breath of God's mouth will carry him away. Let him not deceive himself by trusting what is worthless for he will get nothing in return. Before his time, he will wither and his branches will, will not flourish. He will be like a vine stripped off and stripped of its unripe grapes, like an olive tree shedding its blossoms for the company of the godless will be barren and fire will consume the tents of those who love bribes. <clears throat> they conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Their womb fashions deceit. Okay. So again, uh, you know, we'll we'll see how Job responds to that one. But Eliphaz comes back out, comes right back at him and says, you know, there's nobody righteous. Nobody righteous, not even you. Um, when in actuality, I mean, God, God says to Satan, you know, when he comes before him with all the rest of the angels, have you considered my, my righteous servant, Job? Uh, Job? And uh, says that he's righteous, and and so Job is again. He's in he's in the uh, bullseye of his friends, and uh, his friends basically are saying uh, they're they're being accusatory. You know, there's a lot of backhanded stuff that's happening here. They're they're kind of backhanding him with the things that they're saying, like like you because know, uh, Job was rich, um, he had influence, and uh, so. They're thinking that because he's accepted bribes or something like that, you know, he's 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 messed up somewhere is what they're saying. And so like in verse 29 of chapter 15, he says, you know, he's, he's speaking of the, you know, the, the wicked. And he says, you know, he will no longer be rich and his wealth will not endure, nor will his possessions spread over the land. And he's saying that about Job. He's saying, Job, you were rich. And guess what? God's proving that you are not righteous. And he's taking all those things away. And then he, 
and he you know t- says before his time he he will wither and his branches will not flourish and uh, you know though he's you know he's uh, you know wealthy he's going to lose it all because he you know God's going to make sure that people see that he is not the righteous person you know and so Job's about to reply to that again and we'll read about that tomorrow. But let's go ahead and jump over to Psalm uh, 122, I believe now. Yeah, Psalm 122. It says, uh, um, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is like it is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, that the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord, according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and my friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. And so you have to remember in the uh, uh, Jerusalem is the uh, the place that uh, that the Israelites uh, built the temple of God, that David built, you know, David David was king in, in Jerusalem, but Solomon, his son, built the temple to the Lord. That's where they worshipped him, and um, and so that was this the you know the central place for the people to go to worship. And that's that's what David he's praying for Jerusalem, praying for its safety and security. But the whole main thing is is that because that's the place where the house of God is at, where we gather together to worship Him. And I love that very first verse. He says. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Have you ever had kind of this moment of like really rejoicing because you were going somewhere? Maybe you're going on vacation or you're coming from vacation, going home. And that's what David is saying. He said, I rejoiced when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. That's one of those incredible things that we get to feel each and every week. I said, we get to feel a privilege it's sad in this day and age where, where you know, there's this whole debate over, you know, can I be a Christian and not go to church and all of those things? And yet we are missing the whole point. We ought to be able to just see it as an, an incredible privilege to go to the house of the Lord, to go and worship him with other believers, like-minded people who are just trying to grow, draw, draw closer to God, grow in their relationship with God. Um, go there just admitting, you know what, we all, we, we need, we need God. Um, we all are, are, you know, um, have, have sinned and are just, we are, we are accepted because of the grace of God and his forgiveness. Uh, we can't be self-righteous when we go to church. I mean, you know, and ever look down on other people, but you know, we're, we are all, all equal at the foot of the cross and um, all, all given the opportunity to, uh, to have our lives, uh, our, our sins forgiven and our lives renewed. Aren't you grateful for that? It's the one place in all of the world where there is, uh, there really is equality. There's equality at the foot of the cross because he sees all of us and he's not impressed with dignitaries. He's not impressed with presidents. He's not impressed with, you know, multi-billionaires any more than what he's impressed with you. He loves you, cares about you, and uh, you stand at the foot of the cross, you know, um, you know, with with his um, forgiveness available to you as much as it is to anybody else. And and let me tell you, when you go to when when you go stand before him in heaven, um, he's going to he's going to treat you with with as one of his children that he loves and with his reward, his reward is waiting for you. What an incredible thought. So I hope that you can can say today, you know, I rejoiced with those who said, let's go to the house of God. Um, one of my favorite places to be is the house of God so that we can, uh, uh, so I can go and just worship him. And sometimes I go with, with a heavy heart. And so the place I can go and I can lay my burdens down before him and, uh, and just experience his grace and, and let the Holy spirit just lift us up and, uh, help us to be able to get through another week so that we can go back and just um, come back into his presence again. All right. Well, um, let me pray for you today. Thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for uh, this Lord's day. I I pray, God, that you would help us to uh, to worship you. And uh, Lord, it is a privilege that we can come before you. 
that we can go to the house of God. And Lord, help us to see it as a, such a tremendous privilege, um, you know, that you've made available to, uh, to every person, that we don't have to uh, have uh, lots of money. We don't have to have lots of influence. We don't have to come in with uh, um, having all of our act together. We don't have to come in being perfect. Um, Lord, we come in with all of our, our, our failures and our mistakes and all of those things. And we come in to, uh, um, to bring those things to you and ask you, God, to forgive us and to uh, cleanse us and to strengthen us and to lead us and to guide us. And we thank you, God, for your grace, your unearned favor. And we thank you, Lord, for your love and for giving us another opportunity to come in and to, uh, to just start new, have a new clean slate for a new week. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, that we get to do that. And uh, Lord, I pray for each person who's reading with me today. I, I just ask God that you would help them to know as, um, as they just start up this new week, Lord. Um, they, they end one and start another. God, that they can start over fresh and they can start new. And they can have all of their sins forgiven completely and washed away because of Jesus. And uh, start out with a new week, a fresh start. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, with you that's available uh, not just each and every week, but each and every day. And so, God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. And we thank you for treating us as a, as a parent, as a father who just loves your children so much and who wants nothing but the best for us. So thank you, Lord. We, we just we pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you again for uh, for joining me. I hope you have really a great, great day. And we'll see you tomorrow as we as we start out uh, with a Monday with a new day. All right. Hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you.